Hi, this is So Shy, and you're listening to In the Studio with Alex Seth. I'd like to thank you for joining me right now. If you don't know who I am, I'm L to the X, but you can call me Seth. And this is the first episode of Alex Seth in studio. And today we have a phenomenal star coming in. A celebrity in our own right. A singer, a songwriter, a DJ. Some call her so shy. But right now, I want to introduce my co-host. And he gets very emotional if I don't bring him up. Some call him my protege. He's known as Ed Star. Yep, yep, you've got this right. This is Ed Star in studio with Alex to the X. Oh, my man, what an amazing banging podcast we have ahead of us right here. We've got So Shy in studio. Come on, guys. What more can you ask for? She's so humble. She's so polite. You can be asking for better. So our first question was, if we're not mistaken, So Shy, you began your career as an actress. So how did the change take place from actress to DJ, singer and songwriter? And what sparked it? No, you're not mistaken. And, uh, I actually began my career doing a couple of things at the same time. I was an actress, that's true. I started, um, I actually shot my first movie. I was, I was nine years old. And um, I was already completely immersed in music. You know, my parents were both um, in movies and, uh, you know, producing bands, rock and roll bands to be exact, and soul bands. So it's like, it was just already running in my blood and, and you know, uh, was part of my, my everyday life. So um, I actually got the chance to go on tour with the band uh, Yes, um, John Anderson, you know, um, my father was part of the, the management. And so I got the chance to be on tour I was very little, but still, you know, um, during the Owner of a Lonely Heart tour, and it was just, um, anyway, to answer the question, I guess that being a DJ, being a singer-songwriter, and being an actress is all part of being an artist. And I'm not saying that each artist has to be all of that and wear all of those hats. But what I think is that when you um, are, you know, gifted and when i say that i'm not saying this you know with arrogance i'm saying this is everybody has a gift but if you don't work it if you don't work with it and if you don't work on it then you know you will just die with a gift <laughs> it just it's not really necessary but um again that is um um when you're aware of that and conscious of this you know and people who surround you in your life just make you even feel more conscious about that well then it's kind of a natural you know evolution um djing was something that i did because you know you're always under influence throughout your life whether it's you know good or bad um right or wrong and um i had the chance to meet the wrong people at the right time and the good people at the right time and them all combined now when i look back i can tell it that is it was just all a blessing because some just took me to a direction that actually showed me that i wasn't supposed to be there which made me bounce back even with more um more passion to what i was supposed to do in my calling which was you know uh, the right, you know, flow of music or the right people to work with. I mean, it doesn't matter. My inspiration, the, 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 the right me, right? And it takes time to find yourself. So all those forms of art to try to answer your question, you know, cause it's, it's kind of a debate. Those questions are very, very vast questions. And, um, I met some people also who were either in electronic music or jazz or whatever. So to get to the DJ part, you know, I, I met my first love was a DJ and, um, you know, he taught me how to, you know, do that and, and be a DJ at the time where we really were DJs. I'm not saying today DJs are not DJs. I'm just saying it was the hard way where you have to mix match, you know how to, you know, use vinyls on techniques, MK2, and you just, you can't cheat, you know? And that was great. 
it was a few years of my life and then you know I went back to music and writing because I didn't want to sing other people's words I just I just had so much to say already um so again you know all of that is just is just a, I guess it's a succession of an, an addition of of good and bad accidents you know which lead you to as long as you don't die you will learn from it and 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 build yourself I think that's a, a very good point. I mean, nothing happens by accident. Mm. I mean, the universe has a way of making every part that you take worthwhile. Yeah, most definitely. You know, there are no such things as coincidences in this that's, world. That's what I just said. <laughs> uh, question number two. So out of all the various careers you've experienced, which would you deem the most difficult and the most simple in terms of gaining the fame and expressing the talent? Wow. I really don't want to disappoint you. I, I, I'm trying to be as precise as I can. But th first of all, those are two questions in one. Um, that's cheating here. <laughs> and number two, um, you know what? There is no, I will always, first of all, my answers will always be from a personal point. I'm not, I don't have the objective answer. And obviously art is subjective. So I can only, you know, speak for myself. But um Hmm. I mean, the most difficult, it, 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 I think, would be the writing part. Singing, you know, you, you know how to sing, you just sing, right? I mean, you can sing, so that thing is never going to vanish or die, you know, out of the blue. Um, of course, it can, it can evolve and it has to. Same thing for DJ. I mean, there's a lot of technical part. The technical part, if you if you can master that and if you can manage to to know how to use, you know, equipment, then you're good. Of course, there's the 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 whole programming part, you know, which is a for me one of the most important part because when you're a DJ, you don't have to just mix match, you know, records. You know, um you don't just play records you have to marry them together you have to marry sounds together you have to make sure that the story you're telling through records that are not yours um actually have to say that you know i'm working on producing tracks myself so um but that's that's another story um but when it comes to just playing other people's records it's just you know you have to kind of um it's like a tribute every time you play somebody's record. You got to make sure that what comes before that and, and after, it just makes sense um, to you and, and others. Because obviously you don't just play for you. You, you play for, for, for the people. When it comes to writing, and that's when I say that would be to me. So the, easy, the, easiest, parts, the easiest part would probably be singing. Um, as in expressing the talent, um, when it comes to gaining fame, I, so again, summing up, sorry, uh, most difficult would be the writing because throughout your life and your experience, you know, you have to, I mean, you have, you don't have to have anything to, to say, but if you want to write something substantial, if you want to write something that has depth, if you want to write something that's going to touch people in a way where they can really relate, um, there is a real fine line between forgetting about you and at the same time completely get into yourself so that you can get the most profound feelings and emotions that will lead you to the right words. And then there is a fine line between being original, being you, and at the same time understanding, you know, some type of rules. I hate that term though, but when it comes to not trying to be too corny, too cheesy, too this or too that, too simple, too complex. And we all know nowadays that people don't pay. It's not just nowadays, it's always been this way, especially in pop music. It's just people don't necessarily listen to the lyrics first. They don't pay attention to this first. And it's okay because we're instinctive. So what we listen to at first is just like when we look at a person, we don't just, we don't know what they have to say. We just to see what they look like. And it's the same for music. You know, we hear what it sounds like and then we kind of get into more depth. So as in gaining fame, my friend, 
There's so many platforms now that can give you the opportunity to be famous. But what is fame? I, I don't really know. I had my fame, little fame, um, for a few years. And then it just went off and it comes back on. And it just really is so subjective and so just hard to explain you know there is so many factors it's not just being talented and it's not just delivering work so many great people are in the shadow and they're so brilliant you know so i don't know <laughs> i don't know you just have to engage i guess you have to engage the people that follow you from the start you have to engage into what you do, how you do it, and just use those platforms as much as you can, not necessarily to, um, you know, uh, I guess just, just, you know, show the whole you every day in a, in a way that's not necessary, but you have to show the right thing and you have to show people you're here and alive and in the making constantly creating and involve them. And I think that's the best way to grow your community. I think that's such a valid point because you know, you create art because it's something you have to do. Mm. Um, I always tell uh, uh, people who want to get into the industry, if you're doing it for fame, if you're doing it for money, then it's something you should pursue. It's something that comes directly from the heart. It's something that keeps you up at night. Yes. Um, and, and ideally, it's something that keeps you moving. Yes, it's you all know. about passion, you know. They say if you enjoy what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. So, so shy, that's quite a tongue twister. Upon our research, we found a name that belongs to so shy being Deborah Sarah Epstein. That in itself being a beautiful name. So what exactly inspired the name so shy and where did it come from? Um, Okay, first of all, thanks for the compliment. Anytime. Um, I, I like my name. Um, well, <clears throat> So Shy, that, that nickname, So Shy, um, came from, um, from a long time ago. I was 15 and uh, 14 or 15. And, um, you know, I um, used to. Uh, rapping I was I was surrounded at the time with a crew of rappers and producers you know who were both from France and Atlanta I mean completely completely different um, um, different different you know geographic zones but anyways and I was just we we had a whole summer when we were vibing and every day I would just show up at the this this little lab you know studio slash home slash you know, Delta, where, where all hot rapper or whatever would just like, you know, pass by and everything. And, and I was, I was that little, that little, I don't know, like that, you know, thing. I can't even call it human. Cause it's like, they would just like come over to, to hear me sing some hooks, you know, on their tracks and just vibe stuff and freestyle on the mic. And it was very, underground situation you know we were in the basement and it was just kind of cool and i used to do that all day and then one day it was just those important rappers it was supposed to pass by right those french ones and i was like i got shy you know and and people were like y you don't seem shy like why would you be shy now and i'm like see that's when you don't know me like because I, I do believe that a lot of shy people do crazy things, the craziest things in order to over, to overcome that shyness. You know what I mean? And that's, that is something that I have realized, you know, I, I thought I was this like completely no filter girl and everything when in fact, I am just, it takes a lot for me to, to well, less now, you know, cause I'm more comfortable with myself and, and I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman, you know, but, but still, you know, I do have fears and I do have doubts. And, um, and I think it showed that day. Obviously it did. My father was actually part of the, the, the moment, you know, and, um, and, and he just laughed and, 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 and he said, are you being shy now? And I really, it was blushing and stuff. And, and he's like, and then they just all, um, 
started like freestyling about me being so shy like oh you shy shy girl like shy she's a shy girl and 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 then it's just like it just came you know like i was like wait so shy you know and then my dad was like that's that should be your nickname because that's that's really cool because you're so and you're shy so so shy one word should be your your nickname and from that day well i kept it <laughs> it's it's always peculiar to me how artists are so creative and amongst everything that's going inside of them they really are uh, introverts mm. um if you look at great artists like michael jackson um you know George Michael all of yeah. these guys who've created a great body of work um but deep inside you know they're very shy um you know if you were talking about great artists like Alex Set um who's also very shy um you're also very shy as well i mean i'm tr- been trying to get you a date for months oh please oh please i'm never shy i mean like i speak in front of crowds of like hundreds to thousands But then when you try to hook me up with a girl that I don't want to hook up with, then that's where I am so shy. Okay, we 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 we're going off topic here. This is not this is not a show for you. So let's go on to question number 4. I've seen a lot of co-writing with other artists like Mark Ronson, Estelle and more. So you're a well-established songwriter. What was the greatest challenge sitting with these people, having their ideas sometimes clashing with yours, and how do you deal with such situations? Huh. That's a good one. I like your questions. Um that um is funny cuz this is a conversation I had with a a friend of mine, producer. Co- I mean, he's a writer and a producer. And uh that I never work with, but we did share that those thoughts. Synchronicity being in sync in the momentum in inspiring and inspirational moment that you have to catch and keep for as long as you can with different people that you know each have an ego and a personality an opinion a vision emotion is definitely a challenge um in my case i've been through it all because i I don't know what well established songwriter means because I don't think I have reached my goal yet and I'm definitely not where I I you know where I want to be but I know I'm a professional songwriter and uh I do write for me and and others I mean a lot lately you you'll see that come to life real soon um But when it comes to for like for example Mark Ronson when you when you when you take a producer that also writes is a different thing. Uh when I worked with Timbaland it was the same thing. It was just very different because they have a different control over the session and over the uh the 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 vibe that that is just uh can be intimidating and then and then you have to kind of have that submissive thing where you just go with the flow of what the person has in mind because let's let's not forget sorry the producer is producing so he's kind of directing something that you aren't that doesn't mean you can't take over at some point it's kind of a back and forth situation you know we all have our moment we we catch the ball and then we we throw it back at someone else and it's it's a teamwork but again you know when you when you have all those emotions and all those words and 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 when we listen to each other that is key to what that person has to say at that moment because sometimes it's so spontaneous it can come and just vanish right away uh, especially for me when it comes to melodies or words it's so sudden uh sometimes that if you just are going to say something right at this moment then i am excuse my french i'm fucked and there's no way it's going to come back so <laughs> you have to get to know each other and what i like to do is just spend some time i like to chill with the people i'm not saying i want all of them to be my best friends but it's important to have a conversation to understand body languages to understand each other's language you know and so that we kind of feel the groove and then we get into it you know it's 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 supposed to flow. I I like easy thing. Um I like it when it's easy. So that's why I'm not so much of a co-writer. You know, I like to write uh 
um, on my own more and more um, because I like to collaborate, but I like to have my space um, because I just really um, have so much to say. And it's like a little puzzle that only me really truly want to understand and don't want to really explain so that I can get to the result. Um, I want and desire to serve the song, you know. That makes complete sense. I mean, songwriting is such a personal thing. I mean, it comes from someplace deep inside. And sometimes the only time you can access it is when you're alone. It's stuff. Mm, so very true. So moving right along, so shy. you've traveled around the world a lot. Namely cities like London, Los Angeles and Canada, just to name a few. So which would you say was your favorite destination and why? Oh, wow. Lord, there, there's so many places. Are you kidding me? Um, and you didn't mention if it was to work or just pleasure, you know? I mean, I mean, pleasure is work and work is pleasure anyway, but... Um, so let's talk about both then. Um, well, first of all, I love them. I mean, you, St Stockholm in Sweden was, was very fun. I spent two and a half months over there. Um, with actually a co-writer um, and a very good friend of mine called Michelle Bell. Um, I was working at the time with uh, the crew Bloodshy, um, who worked a lot for, for um, Britney Spears. And it was, um, we were working on tracks for other artists. And, and I had such a blast because people over there are just fucking amazing. And you can beat me every time I curse, but I curse a lot. I apologize, <laughs> um, but I'm not sorry. Anyways, um, yeah, I, it was just fun everywhere I went. London was just amazing. I love England. I lived there for, for a couple of years. Um, New York, you know, Los Angeles is, is in my heart because it's, it, it's been my adoptive city for the last uh, 10 years. Um, New York is where, you know, I spent a lot of time and grew up. So it's kind of like Paris. It's got this urban feeling, you know, and it just never sleeps. So it keeps me, keeps, keeps me up a lot, a lot. Canada is just amazing for the people and the beautiful places. Canada is just, you know, Canadian people, whether they're the French Canadians or English Canadians, you know, they're just, they're just amazing, man. They're just complete. They're just real. I'm not saying others are fake, but I just find that realness in those people and they know how to do things. They do it well and they're very humble. And, um, and I like that. So I learned a lot from them and I just have a lot of Canadian friends. So love it. Loved, um, gosh, um, it, <laughs> Italy, Italy is, is in my heart. Um, Spain is in my heart. Um, gosh, you know, I mean, a few places in Africa, you know, and, uh, it's, it's just honestly hard to, to just, to, to name just one. I love Paris too for what it is when it comes to culture and when it comes to art. Um, and Germany, of course. I love Germany. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, this would take a lot of time just naming all those places. But um, um, listen, at the end of the day, I, I love to travel and um, and see other places and learn about other people's cultures and and meet them in their territories. I, I always tell people that, you know, uh, the one thing you can do in life that will give you perspective is to travel is to go out there, see other cultures, mm. see other countries, um, look at the way people live differently in different environments. Most definitely. The way that shapes your reference of thinking is is, is amazing. It is. Um, it changes your perspective on the world, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, I love that question. Good one, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. So on to our next question. On a more personal note. Uh-oh. <laughs> Aside from your talent in the various industries, you're well known for your tattoo sleeve and the way in which it accentuates your look and your talent. So what was the first tattoo you received? And do tell us more on the experience and event thereof as to why. Um, first of all, it's not a sleeve. This is the whole body. What? Um, that tribal, um, rearranged, you know, tribal, um, you know, piece I have starts on my neck 
and goes all the way down to my foot, um, you know, and uh, uh, it's on all on the left side of my body. And this started, um, I was around 14. The first one I got was a Black Panther. I will not get into this 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 story but or the meaning of it i guess it's pretty obvious um all the meanings you can think of those are that um and uh then i had a sun around my belly button which which was supposed to be like a chakra thing and it's just complete rubbish because it's not it, the sun is not supposed to be placed there and I still want to get it removed and I still haven't I did one removal um, tattoo removal session that was so freaking hurtful and I never got back there I was just like no and they were like you got so much ink on you how can you just complain for like three laser sessions and at the time I guess it wasn't as advanced and it was just crazy even with the numbing cream anyway so but um that piece I had that this long piece I have on the side of my body is really something I wanted to get since I'm a kid and so you know because people think oh you know everybody's tattooed she got to get a tattoo or she's a she's a rebel or you know she's she's provocative or she's and it's none of that to be honest I (laughs) and then I finally found this guy this beautiful artist you know from from um Charlotte in in America and uh, he's left-handed too and I wanted a left-handed art artist just like me and we started the work and you know so little by little you know I did it and it took all together about 150 hours so yeah I'm I love it and I don't even realize I have it anymore people remind me of it because to me it's like a second skin (laughs) you must be really dedicated then because 150 hours is a lot of time I mean you gotta have the patience for that sort of thing it's tough what do you think of that 150 hours good grief absolutely crazy and respect for that I respect Mm. that. that that's amazing in itself it's uh, Aretha Franklin up in here to you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. So during the early stages of development as a singer specifically, what was the greatest challenge you experienced? And how would you advise other upcoming singers on ways to overcome it? Um, hmm. Well, during the early stages of development, um, the greatest challenge was probably just overcoming the shyness to get back to that um because i started singing pretty early i was actually eight years old when when i just realized singing was going to really be what i wanted to do but it wasn't with the right genre though i love classic music and opera this is what i started with (laughs) singing that you know i was a soprano at the time and and um and um it was pretty it could go pretty high and it could go pretty low and um that's how i sort of like worked on my range even though i i'm a self-made singer i took a few courses and i was like fuck it you know i just want to do it my own way and of course sometimes it was not good and you know i i didn't warm up before to sing you know i had nodules on my vocal cords because i didn't use it the right way but i just you know took advice here and there and watched just great singers sing and kind of mimic the thing and 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 until i found my own voice you know and um the greatest challenge was the live you know live performances because i was jamming and i was doing some live stuff a lot early on and i was scared to death like i was just i was like why am i doing this why didn't i do why did i become a lawyer why didn't i become a freaking i don't know like uh rescue tigers and bears and lions i don't know why do i do this why don't i sell clothes or make them but why am i doing this on stage in front of all those people judging me and and you know at the at at the time i saw this as a 
really as a competition, but in a way that was not, um, yeah, how do you say, uh, maybe generous because I was very narcissistic. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, um, it was all about me. Look at me sing, look at me and listen to me sing great and blah, blah, blah. And it was less about sharing. You know what I mean? It was more about trying to be validated. So what I'm trying to say is that, it, and it's, it's kind of a confession here. It took me a long time. And for some people it doesn't, but for me, again, on a personal standpoint, it took a lot of time for me to find my own voice and to look at this challenge to because the challenge is every day the challenge is waking up in the morning and continue to stay with the feeling of loving what you do no matter what's going on in the world that's so effed up okay and um and 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 find that compassion and love and passion to continue doing what you do keeping your smile on and the force the good force, the positive in you so that what you do is real. When you only do that, wake up, take your five breaths, <sighs> inhale, exhale, and then just go through the day and create without feeling too uh, interfered with all that's going on, you know, in the world that's negative then this is good. Sing your heart out. Sing your soul. Like that's all you got to do. You got to to forget about yourself. You got to forget about yourself thinking about what you're singing. And at the same time, which is, I know, a little ironic, you got to get into you, so deep in you, that you can take what is so essential and pure and real in you. I mean, that's the craziest striptease I've ever, you know, experienced is when you sing, you're naked. There's just, it's just nothing but you. So overcoming challenges, this overcoming your everyday life. If you can overcome what's going on in your life with a positive attitude, then what you create and how you sing it, don't worry about it. I love the fact that you compare uh, artistic expression with being naked because that's exactly what it is, isn't it? Because every time you do a record, every time you do um, poetry, every time you, you, you paint a picture, you're leaving a piece of yourself behind. Mm. And I think what, what Sosha just uh, 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 talked about and what she mentioned was is very relevant, especially for young artists. Extremely. You know, it's all about that rawness of it all that you're getting it as it comes. So moving right along, Soshai, how important is it to have confidence in any of these entertainment industries, such as acting, singing, and DJing? And how can others pursuing careers in these fields remain motivated and confident despite the negative views they're given by people telling them they're never gonna make it or that's not a real job? Well, I, I believe I sort of answered this question in the, the previous one. Confidence. Hmm. Confidence. Confidence is consci it's conscience. That's that's what I've learned to understand. When you're conscious of things, when you're conscious of you, when you're conscious of you being nothing in this world and everything at the same time, when you're conscious that you are the most important person for you and for certain people, and you also mean nothing to others, that gives you sort of an average, a middle to sort of, uh, you know, work with that will give you the necessary ego. I don't like that term either. That necessary, very confident state of mind you need to be in, which is strong mind. Confident means strong. It doesn't mean egotistical. It means strong. It gives you that strength, right, of mind to um, impose and, and propose what you are about and what you sing about, what you write about, what you DJ about, what you act about, no, no matter what you do. 
And it gives you the humility to understand that you are a part of a bigger thing. I do not believe all the people who told me that I were never going to make it. I was never going to make it. And it still happens because some people have greater, you know, e expectations from me or they don't and they see me grow and they hate it or they want to see me grow faster. And to both of them, I have to say, well, thank you. Thank you because you give me the strength to you give me what I need to actually be greater and be the better version of myself. And th that's really all I can say. Singing, acting, DJing is not a real job. Well, to those who say that, fuck you. And number two, do that. Try. Well, of course, I'm sorry to say it. And, and I don't care if you hate me for that. Whoever will listen to it. If a model all of a sudden, you know, is tired of being a model. She's tired of walking the runway and being just beautiful and wants more depth in her life. And then she's going to start being a singer. All of a sudden she wakes up in the morning and be like, I'm going to be a singer because that's just what I'm going to do. I got money. I'm beautiful. And I just can grab the mic and that's it. They're just going to drop dead. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. But if the model is good, at singing and what she does and she works on it while we're walking the runway and and you know what I mean then do it all I'm saying is you have to work it's not just a gift like even if you have a gift I know so many people who can sing but they don't work on it so they're not professional see that's a job the moment you can make a living out of it as hard as it is the moment you you know, invest yourself and your time and your energy into what you do. This is called a job. I don't care what other people say. It's it's very important advice. I mean, mm. if, if you spend your time thinking about what other people want you to be and what other people want you to do and what people are saying about you, you're never going to progress and you're never going to reach that level where you're completely happy with yourself. Mm. Preach, preach, man. You just, you do you. That's what it's all about. You do you. So moving right along, so shy. Question number nine. Would you say there is a commonality between an entrepreneur and a singer, artist, or DJ? How and why would you say so? Well, no. Again, um, it was a slip. Um, no, I... Well, okay. No and so. <laughs> no and yes. No, because you don't necessarily have to be um, an entrepreneur at all in order to be a singer that sings on other people's track who's just following a lead and does it great. Um, you don't have to be an entrepreneur to be an artist. Some artists just need to be completely babysitted and, and, and managed and, you know, and, and, and led and they just are completely in their artistic zone and they don't want to think about anything else but creating pure creation same for dj you can have an agent and just go and and you know you know entertain people and just do your job great without being an entrepreneur an entrepreneur for me is someone who who tries to take his career to a, a whole other level and 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 be responsible for for that career responsible for the choices responsible for the for the moves responsible for um um the marketing the way you position yourself in the world in the industry or artistry the the image you're going to and the message that you're going to uh you know pass on uh, an entrepreneur is someone that, you know, eventually will have his own label, his own structure, his own company and, um, and you know, um, takes that very seriously on a business side. Um, so that's, a, a, again, a very vast question because there's so many different ways to be an entrepreneur and a di different ways to be a DJ artist, D a singer slash artist slash DJ, to quote you. So, um, yes, there is commonality in the sense of, and that's my yes answer. Be, I, I, this is what I think we should all be today, especially today. 
um, if we don't take responsibility, if we don't take, um, if we don't manage ourselves more than we used to, um, today is going to be harder. If you are an artist, a true artist, you got to know who you are, where you're going, where you were, where you're going to go. And, um, and you need help for that. Of course you do. You always need a team. I can never do anything on my own. I, I mean, maybe others can. I can't. I need others. I know why I need them. I don't need a, a lot. But, um, yeah, I, I, um, I do think that, I mean, I speak for myself again had to um, go through all the experience of being completely ignorant when it comes to the business side um, and was only focusing on the, the creative. And that's when I realized I was wrong. And throughout the years, as technologies advanced, advanced, you know, and, and, and um, th this digital way of, of putting out music and, and selling yourself, you know, and when I say that, I don't mean, you know, selling out i mean selling yourself selling your art uh, knowing how to sell it um put a stamp on it um you just ultimately and naturally will become um, more responsible for all the other aspects you know that are outside of just the the creative moment um If that makes any sense <laughs> yes of course it does so moving right along to our penultimate question so shy we've been told by various birdies that you're making a re-entrance into the acting industry can you perhaps confirm this for us and maybe give us a little sneak peek of what's to come first of all um well i'm not i'm not making any re-entrance into the acting industry it's 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 not I don't see it that way. Um, let me let me say this. Um, I am working on three very important projects at the time, which are the three of them are musical. However, it has everything to do with visual because to me, what's um, audible has to be visible and palpable. So. When there's audio, it's got to be visual. It's got to be video. That's just, to me, it, it goes together. If not, I still feel like something's missing. So what I'm trying to say is that there is a project that I'm working on, and that's exclusive here. Um, you're the first people I'm, I'm saying this to that's part of the press or whatever, um, blogs, you know, and... Um, I'm working on a project that I am producing and creating um, for as as a as a side project that might become a main project. Who knows? It it, it really be um, depends on how it's going to be received um, in the in the scene. But um, it's a very very special um, concept of mine that I have, and this thing will go along with a series of um, movies. And visuals um, so obviously I'm going to um, perform as an actress um, too um, the other project is uh, a um, someone absolutely amazing that's called um, Gal Cohen who's based in Tel Aviv and um, we are working on a few songs together on a project as well uh, him and I together um, very electronic pop you know organic acoustic it's, it's going to be very interesting too um we both are just involved in this in a like equally you know it's it's almost like a group thing it's like a it's really a project we have together um and the third project is um um is a, a legendary DJ slash producer that I'm starting to work with. And uh, I, I'm actually now involved in his whole um, album, new album, um, as a writer and as a singer. So I'm very excited about that. So those are the three main projects I'm working on. And um, 
as in the acting acting like solely acting um yes i have ideas uh that i've been writing for short movies um i am in europe currently and um as you know the acting industry is very fruitful and just really moving um in la out in la and uh, i have a few people interested in representing me agents and uh, a few directors you know who want to meet me for projects and to actually um make me a part of their their movies as a as an important you know imp important roles and 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 i'm very blessed to see that come in and i didn't really do anything for that which is a sign from the universe maybe but i am in europe for the moment and i have to finish um those three projects first before to really get involved into um a movie um you know unless someone crazy calls me in it's just completely making sense and it's just now and you have to catch the momentum until until then i will do it when i feel the time <laughs> is right you know what we're waiting here in south africa with bated breath because we want to hear new music mm. we want to see you in movies and when you release new tracks can we break it right here on in the studio with alex said can we have a promise to that ed star what do you think i think that's an absolutely amazing request why would we have it any other way l to the x which you can call me said okay let's get to that last question because i think it's the most important one It's done. You can do the honors. Sure, not a problem. So, have you ever been to South Africa and do you intend on visiting us anytime soon? I have never been. And let me tell you this, I would love and I cannot wait to come over. Like I cannot wait to come see you and visit you. Um I see so many great artists whether it's actors or um just you know musicians and singers and creators of all sort you know that come from this place and i really feel like this place is a country inside the is is just a country that's has its own you know uh, how do you say that it's just flow of of creativity and that is very different very different from the the rest of the continent and and even the world so this would be a um a blessing for me to come over I, i mean whenever i get the chance i will you know whether it's f during a tour or or to um um you know speak or just um or perform i i would really or dj or any type of performance i would love 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 to um go to south africa so You guys um get me there. <laughs> <laughs> and we would love to have you here. And let me tell you something. We are going to make plans right now to try and get you down here to DJ a gig because we hear you live on Facebook dropping some amazing tunes, mm. some great tunes. So shy, I want to thank you for being on the show um in studio with Alex Set. I want to thank you for being so humble, being such an inspiration to the youth out there. It's been incredible. I think this show has gone on for about what, 2 hours, Ed Star? <laughs> It does feel that way but you know what I don't mind it at all because with every response is just a learning curve and it's so amazing to hear an artist as yourself so humble and polite to answer our questions. And I think that if we don't bring you down for work we got to bring you down here for some leisure. Oh, Even yes. if it's just us hanging at the beach I think that would be great. We're looking forward to your new release. We're looking forward to your new projects from South Africa. We want to say Alex Seth out. Thanks again for this interview. I'm sending lots of love to whoever um listen to this interview um on your radio show Arish. I am sending you my love. Uh thank you for your very smart and interesting questions and um stay tuned for what's coming up. It's going to be very exciting and I can't wait to share with the world. Bye. Peace and love. That was so shy from Paris, France. We are so blessed to have her come in and answer our questions. Mm. Well, she didn't actually come in. I mean, she was uh, answering it remotely from Europe. But what an individual. I mean, you know, wow. she's making the world dance. She's making us dance, and we can't wait for her new products to hit the market. Um Eddie, my co-host, I just want to put this out there. He wrote some of the questions. Uh he you know, he's been going on, "Oh, so shy loves my questions, man." And, you know, 
You know, I, I, he wants his own show now. He's like, I got my own show, man, my own show. Huh? Eddie, is there anything you want to say before we leave? Yeah, this has been in the studio with Al to the X, but you can call me Seth. And I want you guys to join us because we're going to do more interviews, not only with international celebrities, but also local artists down here. This has been a very long interview. And if you've stuck to the whole thing, I respect that. Al to the X, but you can call me Seth. This has been in the studio with Alex Seth. Hi, this is So Shy, and you're listening to In the Studio with Alex Seth. <laughs>